Kennedy landing on the moon, man, that was maybe the greatest thing ever. Maybe the greatest thing ever. Um, so I can't believe we're launching from that pad. Thank you, thank you for letting us <laughs> Let's do that. Thank you for refurbishing <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, uh, it's really hard to believe. It's an incredible history. Hope we go back to the moon soon. That's the goal. Yeah. Have, have, we should have a base on the moon, like a, a permanently occupied human base on the moon and send people to Mars, you know, and a city, build a city on Mars. That's what we should do. As I see it, there's three reasons why Mars should be the goal of our space program. And in short, it's because Mars is where the science is, it's where the challenge is, and it's where the future is. It's where the science is because Mars, okay, it was once a warm and wet planet. It had liquid water on its surface for more than a billion years, which is about five times as long as it took life to appear on Earth after there was liquid water here. So if the theory is correct that life is a natural development from chemistry, or if you have liquid water, various elements in sufficient time, life should have appeared on Mars even if it subsequently went extinct. And if we can go to Mars and find fossils of past life, we'll have proven the development of life is a general phenomenon in the universe. Okay? Or, Alternatively, if we go to Mars and find plenty of evidence of past bodies of water, but no evidence of fossils of development of life, that could say that the development of life from chemistry is not sort of a, a natural process that occurs with high probability, but includes elements of freak chance, and we could be alone in the universe. Furthermore, if we can go to Mars and drill, because there's liquid water underground on Mars, reach the groundwater, there could be life there now. And if we can get hold of that and look at it and examine its biological structure and biochemistry, we could find out if life as it exists on Mars is the same as Earth life, because all Earth life at the biochemical level is the same. We all use the same amino acids, the same method of replicating and transmitting information, RNA, DNA, all that. Is that what life has to be? Or could life be very different from that? Are we what life is, or are we just one example drawn from a much vaster tapestry of possibilities? This is real science. This is fundamental questions that thinking men and women have wondered about for thousands of years, the role of life in the universe. This is very different from going to the moon and dating craters in order to produce enough data to get a credible paper to publish in the Journal of Geophysical Research and get tenure. Okay, the, the, um, okay. Um, this is, this is, you know, hypothesis-driven critical science. This is the real thing. Second, the challenge, okay? You know, I, I think societies are like individuals. We grow and we challenge ourselves. We stagnate when we do not. Humans to Mars program would be a tremendously bracing challenge for our society to be tremendously productive, particularly among youth, okay? Humans to Mars program would say to every kid in school today, learn your science and you could be an explorer of a new world. We get millions of scientists, engineers, inventors, technological entrepreneurs, doctors, medical researchers out of that. And that the intellectual capital from that would enormously benefit us. It would dwarf the cost of the program. And then finally, it's the future. Mars is the closest planet that has on it all the resources needed to support life and therefore civilization. If we do what we can do in our time, to establish that little Plymouth Rock settlement on Mars. Then, 500 years from now, there'll be new branches of human civilization on Mars, and I believe throughout nearby interstellar space. But, you know, look, I ask any American, what happened in 1492? They'll tell me, well, Columbus sailed in 1492, and that is correct, he did. But that's not the only thing that happened in 1492. In 1492, England and France signed a peace treaty. In 1492, the Borgias took over the papacy. In 1492, Lorenzo de' Medici, the richest man in the world, died. Okay, a lot of things happened. If there had been newspapers in 1492, which there weren't, but if there had, those would have been the headlines, not this Italian weaver son taking a bunch of ships and sailing off to nowhere. Okay, but, <laughs> but Columbus is what we remember, not the Borgias taking over the papacy. Okay, well, 500 years from now, people are not going to remember which faction came out on top in Iraq or Syria or whatever, and, the, 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 and who was in and who was out. And, and, you know, but they will remember what we do to make their civilization possible. Okay, so this is the most important thing we could do most important thing we could do in this time. And if you have it in your power to do something great and important and wonderful, then you should.
I mean, first of all, why go anywhere, right? Um, the, I, I think th there, there are really two fundamental paths. History is going to bifurcate along two directions. One, one, one path is we stay on Earth forever, um, and then there will be some eventual extinction event. Um, I, I don't have an immediate doomsday prophecy, but there's, it's eventually history suggests there will be some, some doomsday event. Uh, the alternative is to become a space-faring civilization and a multi-planet species, which uh, I hope you would agree that is the right way to go. Yes? <laughs> there, you know, sometimes people wonder, well, what about other places in the solar system? Why, why Mars? Uh, so our options for, for, going to, for, for becoming a multi-planet species within our solar system are, uh, are limited. Uh, we have, uh, in terms of nearby options, we've, we've got Venus, uh, but Venus is a high pressure, a su super high pressure hot acid bath. Um, so that, that would be a tricky one. Uh, Venus is not at all like um, the, the, the goddess. This is not in no way similar to, to, to the actual goddess. Um, so it's uh, really difficult to make things work on Venus. Uh, Mercury is also way too close to the sun. Um, we could go potentially on the, Mar one, of the, on the one of the moons of Jupiter or Saturn, but those are quite far out, much further from the sun, a lot harder to get to. It really leaves us with one option if we want to become a multi-planet civilization, and that's, that's Mars. Uh, we could conceivably go to our moon, um, and I certainly have nothing against going to the moon, but I think it's, it's challenging to create a, uh, a become multi-planetary on the moon because it's, it's much smaller than than, than a planet. Uh, it doesn't have any atmosphere. It, it's not as resource rich as Mars. Um, it's got a 28 day day, whereas the Mars day is 24 and a half hours. Um, and it, in general, Mars is, is far better suited to ultimately scale up to be a self sustaining civilization. So, just to give some uh, comparison between the, uh, the, the, the two planets. Um, that they're actually fairly, they're remarkably close in a lot of ways. In, in fact, um, we now believe that, that early Mars was a lot like Earth. And in fact, if we could warm Mars up, we would once again have a thick, a thick atmosphere and liquid oceans. So, but where, where things are right now, Mars is, Mars is about half again as far from the sun as, as Earth. Uh, so it's still decent sunlight. Um, it, it's a little cold. Uh, but we can warm it up. Um, it has a, a very helpful atmosphere, which in the case of Mars being uh, primarily CO2 with some nitrogen and argon and a few other trace elements, means that we can grow plants on Mars just by compressing the atmosphere. Um, and, uh, so it's, and it has nitrogen too, which is also very important for, for growing plants. Um, it would be quite fun to be on Mars because you'd have gravity, which is about uh, 37% that of Earth, uh, so you'd be able to lift heavy things and bound around and like, have a lot of fun. Um, and the, the day is remarkably close to that of, of Earth. And um, so we just need to change that bottom row, because currently we have 7 billion people on Earth and zero on Mars. 